You know, products uh, can sometimes get built in a matter of months, uh, but culture is built day by day over years and, and decades. And um, I, I think it's really important to take a long-term approach to how we think about um, remote work. Mark Zuckerberg here is discussing a problem on the minds of many business leaders. Research shows that when employees leave places with a high concentration of specialized workers, innovation is stifled. And as the pandemic continues, more companies are letting workers move far away from the office, sometimes permanently. So why is proximity important? And what are companies doing to adapt to their decentralized workforces? Over the decades, tech companies like Apple, Tesla, and Facebook opened offices in Silicon Valley, creating a hub of specialized tech workers. Business leaders and economists say that this proximity is key to the success of a new venture. Research from the labor economist Enrico Moretti suggests that when specialized workers live near one another, their companies gain a competitive advantage. Places like Silicon Valley are very expensive because labor costs more, office space costs more. But they also come with a lot of advantages, and especially if you are in the innovation sector. There's a growing body of research that points to the fact that firms and uh, inventors and innovators are particularly productive and creative in places like Silicon Valley. In a recent paper, Moretti traced the migration patterns in patent filings of more than 900,000 scientists, inventors, and engineers. He found that when a worker leaves an industry-specialized city, that worker innovates at a slower pace. In my data, I'm following the same person over time. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing an innovator or inventor in rural Ohio, in Cleveland, in, you know, in the small place, in the small cluster, and I see how many patterns they, they create. And then I see that person moving to Silicon Valley or Seattle or Boston. And what you see is that the same person becomes <laughs> immediately significantly more productive. Moretti says that on average, a worker in a city with many companies in their field will produce better ideas at a faster pace. But during the pandemic, people have left tech clusters like San Francisco, some permanently. Companies say that some employees want to be closer to their hometowns and families. Others are looking to save money. Though the median price for a one-bedroom rental fell in 2020, San Francisco remains one of the most expensive metro areas in the U.S. Over recent years, that's led to a migration from the Bay to places like Sacramento, Las Vegas, and Austin, Texas. Companies have had to reimagine how they'll keep innovating while their workforces spread out. When you try to measure where innovation comes from, it's hard to force it. It's hard to tell people we're going to lock you in a room and you're going to be innovative. For a decade, Laszlo Bach led people operations at Google. In 2017, he launched his own company, Humu. Humu develops products that influence worker behavior. It's headquartered near Alphabet's campus in Mountain View. In my prior job when I was at Alphabet, we talked a lot about what we called casual collisions or moments of serendipity where people casually bump into one another. So famously, Google News, which is an aggregator of websites, evolved because following the events of September 11th, there were two engineers standing in line in a cafe. One of them was complaining about how it's hard to keep up with all the news, and the other said I could pull something together. Bach says that these moments of serendipity are the building blocks of innovation, but they come most easily in person. Bringing people physically together, and more importantly, emotionally together, is vital, a prerequisite for innovation. Bach says that innovation in the workplace comes from low affinity distance. Affinity distance is central to innovation and productivity. It's that sense of closeness, of connectivity, of psychological safety that allows somebody to say, I've got a crazy idea, I'm going to try that. And the challenge with remote work is when you've been around people and hung out with them and talked about their kids and had water cooler conversations, you get low affinity distance. We get closer to one another. Some companies prefer to develop those bonds in person, and others are leaning into the remote experience. There's a handful of companies that are saying, we're just going to be remote forever. We're going to hire people wherever they want to be, and that's how it's going to be. In the short term, companies are turning to their own products to build community. Facebook, for example, is adding workplace-friendly features to its portal video conferencing product. So we use our own product, our Nudge Engine, and it's great at finding those little moments where people can actually connect and, and be human and innovate. Humu's Nudge product sends messages to employees at specific times to encourage behaviors that boost productivity. 
For example, it might send a nudge that suggests changing up weekly virtual team bonding activities. By changing the prompt or the type of event every month or two or three months, you refresh the experience and you help bring people together. Other companies are cutting down on avoidable meetings and designing workflows that accommodate people who live in different time zones. An example of this might be having a really, really clear problem statement in a Google document and a proposed solution to that, and having multiple people being able to weigh in on that document, giving comments on their own time, and then that being sufficient enough for the uh, project leader to synthesize all that information and make the, the next iteration of that proposed solution. Dominique Bayet shapes the employee experience at Coinbase a San Francisco tech company that is now remote first. She says it's an opportunity to make the workplace more efficient for people who may have otherwise been marginalized. Even if work environments had been remote friendly before, remote first creates a more equitable playing field to root out some of the systemic disadvantages of not being in the office when the majority of your colleagues are in the office. At other companies like Facebook, corporate offsite gatherings could invert into onsites for remote workers at headquarters. But Alphabet, for example, plans to have workers return to the office when it's safe. Surveys conducted by economists say that after the pandemic, about 25% of all full workdays will be performed from home. In the meantime, companies will keep revamping the remote experience. <laughs>